Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode. And if you listened to the last one, you know that I'm still standing here uh, recording a set of four. This is number two. Uh, so the first word for today is adjoin. A D J O I N. This is a verb from the 14th century. Transitive verb definitions are one, to add or attach by joining. Two, to lie next to or in contact with. The intransitive verb definition is to be close to or in contact with one another. The etymology is saying that this is essentially from uh, the word jungere. This is Latin. Jungere or jungere, which means to join, and there's more at the word yoke, Y-O-K-E. Next is adjoining, adjective from the 15th century, touching or bounding at a point or line. And the synonym says see the word adjacent, which we have already read. If you want to hear the definition of adjacent, go listen to the last episode. Next we have adjoint, A-D-J-O-I-N-T. This is a noun from 1889. The transpose of a matrix in which each element is replaced by its cofactor. That looks like um, something relating to math. The etymology says this is from adjoindre. No, that's probably not how it's pronounced. It's a French word. Adjoindre, I don't know, uh, which means to adjoin. Next, we have adjourn. This is a verb from the 15th century the transitive verb definition is to suspend indefinitely or until a later started time intransitive definitions are one to suspend a session indefinitely or to another time or place two to move to another place the etymology says this is from the old french ajourné A-J-O-R-N-E-R, which means to order to appear in court on a certain day. And uh, that is made by combining uh, the Latin ad plus jour, uh, which I'm assuming is still French, J-O-U-R, which means day. That seems like a French word. And there's more at the word journey. Again, I just, uh, I think it's interesting how certain words are related Um, It's very clear, it's very obvious from a spelling standpoint. Adjourn, J-O-U-R, is in there, and journey starts with J-O-U-R. And I'm curious, uh, when we get to journey, they probably won't explain it, but I am curious how uh, the word day turned into journey. We know, was it like a day's journey? I don't know. Uh, Just just things I, I think are interesting. I'll shut up now. But on to the next word. The shut up has ended. Adjournment. This is a noun from 1607. One, the act of adjourning. Two, the state or interval of being adjourned. Next is a judge, not a judge. It's one word, A-D-J-U-D-G-E. This is a verb from the 14th century. Uh, one, one A, to decide or rule upon as a judge. The synonym is adjudicate. 1b to pronounce judiciously rule is the synonym number two is archaic it has the uh, synonyms sentence and condemn three to hold or pronounce to be deem is the synonym d-e-e-m as in adjudge the book a success four to award or grant judiciously in a case of controversy Next is the word adjudicate, which came up in the last word. This is a verb from 1775. The transitive definition is to settle judiciously, and the intransitive definition is to act as judge. Adjudicative. Adjudicative. I think that's the pronunciation. That's an adjective. And adjudicator. That's the person. That's a noun. And a adjudicator. Adjudicatory. No, oh, this is not how it's pronounced. Where's the, where's the emphasis? Adjudicatory. Adjudicatory. That is the adjective. Next, adjudication. This is a noun from 1691. One, the act or process of adjudicating. To a, a judicial decision or sentence. To b, a decree in bankruptcy. 
Next is the word adjunct. A-D-J-U-N-C-T. This is the first form. Noun. From 1588. One. Something joined or added to another thing, but not essentially a part of it. 2A. A word or word group that qualifies or completes the meaning of another word or other words and is not itself a main structural element in its sentence. 2B. An adverb or adverbial as heartily in they ate heartily, or at noon in we left at noon, attached to the verb, hold on, I'm going to start this one over. Uh, Let's read the definition before we get to the part in parentheses. So, to be, an adverb or adverbial attached to the verb of a clause, especially to express a relation of time, place, frequency, degree, or manner. And it says compared to the word disjunct, to the second definition of the word disjunct. So the part in parentheses, it's giving some examples. There's the quote, they ate heartily. Not they hate heartily. They ate heartily. And the word heartily is the, uh, I guess, the adjunct verb. Um, And then the second example is we left at noon. And at noon is uh, is the adverb in this case. 3A. An associate or assistant of another. 3B. An adjunct faculty member at a college or university. 4. It has the synonym adjuvant. A-D-J-U-V-A-N-T. B. So I'm guessing there's no uh, one or two definition. It's just A and B. And maybe a C. Adjunctive is the adjective. Next is the second form of adjunct, adjective from 1594, one, added or joined as an accompanying object or circumstance, two, attached in a subordinate or temporary capacity to a staff, as in an adjunct professor, adjunctly is the adverb. Next is adjunction, so it's the same word as before, just with a shun, a T-I-O-N added to the end. This is a noun from 1618, the act or process of adjoining. Next is adjuration, A-D-J-U-R-A-T-I-O-N. This is a noun from 1611, one, a solemn oath, two, an earnest urging or advising. Adjuratory is the adjective. Next is the word adjure, A-D-J-U-R-E. This is a verb from the 14th century. One, to command solemnly, under or as if under, oath or penalty of a curse. Two, to urge or advise earnestly. And the synonym is the word beg, B-E-G. The etymology says this is from uh, the Latin ad plus Jurare, which means to swear, and there's more at the word jury, J-U-R-Y. And funny, this is coming up today because I just got in the mail a jury summons, uh, and I actually have some plans for work that day, so I'm hoping that I can extend it. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Next is uh, the word adjust, and this will be the last for today. It's a little on the long side. This is a verb from the 14th century transitive definitions 1a to bring to a more satisfactory state 1a1 it has the uh, synonyms settle and resolve 1a2 has the synonym rectify 1b to make correspondent or conformable adapt is the synonym 1c To bring the parts of to a true or more effective relative position, as in, adjust a carburetor. Two, to reduce to a system. Regulate is the synonym. Three, to determine the amount to be paid under an insurance policy in settlement of a loss. Intransitive definitions are one, to adapt to conform oneself as to new conditions. Two, to achieve mental and behavioral balance between one's own needs and the demands of others. Synonym says see adapt. Adjustability is the noun, and adjustable is the adjective. 
And adjustive is another adjective. That will be the end of the episode. Thank you for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer reading the dictionary. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of the dictionary. Um, I haven't uh, mentioned it in a number of episodes, but I know some of you are probably very curious. Uh, What's up with your lips? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back maybe uh, 10 episodes or so. Again, I strongly, strongly recommend you listen to these in order because you will be very confused. Uh, So, yeah, I I went to the dentist. My lips were uh, a little swollen or a little, a little, it just felt kind of weird for multiple days after that. It's been probably close to a week, actually, by this point, uh, since I went to the dentist. And I don't know if it was something that they did. I don't know if it was the chapstick that I was using. It's it's a winter, so my lips get very chapped and dry, so I do use that. Um, otherwise, if I don't, they get cracked and bleed and they hurt, and it really, really sucks. Uh, so I was using some chapstick. I'm wondering if maybe I was allergic to something in that chapstick. I'm not sure. Um, I've actually switched to a different chapstick. They do still feel a little weird, a little, a little swollen. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know if that's it or if it's just whatever the dentist did is is uh, waning away. But that's the update. I'm sure you were very curious. Um, and maybe in another few episodes, I'll give you another update if you're lucky. But let's get to some words. This is uh, adjustable rate mortgage. Noun from 1981, a mortgage having an interest rate which is usually initially lower than that of a mortgage with a fixed rate, but is adjusted periodically according to the cost of funds to the lender. I actually have one of these, uh, kind of unfortunately. Um, It's also called an ARM, A-R-M, which is the the acronym. Uh, When I first bought my place it was before the big crash in 2008. Uh, it was it was in 2006 where everything was, uh, all the prices were pretty high. Um, and I, uh, I got a five-year arm, which meant that for five years, the interest rate was locked. And don't worry, I'll keep this story short. And then in 2008, everything crashed. After five years, my interest rate actually went way, way down, which was great because my mortgage went down. Uh, But now things have been slowly going back up. So my mortgage is slowly going back up, which does not feel good to my wallet. Moving on, the word adjusted. This is an adjective from 1662. One, accommodated to suit a particular set of circumstances or requirements. Two, having achieved an often specified and usually harmonious relationship with the environment or with other individuals, as in a well-adjusted school child. Next is adjuster, spelled A-D-J-U-S-T-E-R, or O-R at the end. This is a noun from 1673, one that adjusts, especially an, an insurance agent who investigates personal or property damage and makes estimates for effective, for affecting settlements. Next is adjustment, noun from 1644, one the act or process of adjusting. Two, a settlement of a claim or debt in a case in which the amount involved is uncertain or full full payment is not made. See, my lips are not doing what I want them to do. Three, the state of being adjusted. Four, a means as a mechanism by which things are adjusted one to another. Five, a correction or modification to reflect actual conditions. Adjustmental, nay, wait, that's not how it's, adjust, adjustmental, is that really adjustmental? It's one word. It seems like it should be adjustmental, but that doesn't sound right. And it's showing that the emphasis is is on the men, adjustmental, weird. Uh, this is, that is the adjective. Sorry, I took so long on that random word. Next is adjutancy? or adjutancy, I think that's it, adjutancy, A-D-J-U-T-A-N-C-Y, noun from 1775, the office or rank of an adjutant, or adjutant, which is our next word, because I don't know that one, Uh, adjutant, A-D-J-U-T-A-N-T, 
or no, adjutant. Okay, so our last word is adjutancy, and this one is adjutant. That sounds more correct. This is a noun from、uh, 1539. One, a staff officer in the army, air force, or marine corps who assists the commanding officer and is responsible, especially for correspondence. And I don't really know anything about the military, so that's probably why this word does not look familiar to me.、Uh, and two, one who helps. Assistant is the synonym. The etymology is saying that this is from the Latin adjutare, which means to help. And there's more at the word aid, a i d. Next, we have adjutant general. And actually, now that I'm seeing it in that context, context,、uh, it sounds a little familiar.、Um, if I remember correctly. When I interviewed my grandfather for his life story video, which I I mentioned a few episodes back,、um, I think he mentioned this word, adjutant general, or maybe I've heard it somewhere else. I'm not sure, uh, but uh, this is a noun from 1645. One, the chief administrative officer of an army who is responsible especially for the administration or preservation of personnel records. Two, the chief. Administrative officer of a majority, no, major military unit. My brain added some information there that was not supposed to be there. So let me read number two again. The chief administrative officer of a major military unit, as a division or corps, and corps is spelled C O R P S for those who don't know. Next, we have the first form of the word adjuvant. Adjuvant. Oh yes, I think that's it. A D J U V A N T. This is an adjective from 1574. One serving to aid or contribute. Auxiliary is the synonym. Two assisting in the prevention, amelioration, or cure of disease, as in adjuvant chemotherapy following surgery. And the etymology it looks to be the same information as,、uh, let's see, as adjutant.、Uh, it says there's more at the word aid. Next is the second form of adjuvant, 1609. That's a noun, one that helps or facilitates, as a, an ingredient, as in a prescription or a solution that modifies the action of the principal ingredient. B. Something as a drug or method that enhances the effectiveness of medical treatment, as in used chemotherapy as an adjuvant to surgery. C. A substance as one added to a vaccine, enhancing the immune response to an antigen. Next, we have A D L, all caps. This is an abbreviation for one, activities of daily living, and two, anti defamation league. Next, we have Adlerian, Adlerian, capital A D L E R I A N. When I first saw this word, it looked a little bit like another word which I would not have expected to be in the dictionary,、uh, and obviously it wasn't. Which is the word Alderaan, which,、uh, if you are familiar with、uh, Star Wars, that word probably sounds familiar to you.、Uh, this is an adjective. From 1924, it is named from Alfred Adler, so Adlerian,、uh, of or relating to or being a theory and technique of psychotherapy, emphasizing the importance of feeling of inferiority, a will to power, and overcompensation in neurotic processes. Processes. Next is Adlib, A D dash L I B. We have. Essentially, three forms、um, of this, but it really two official forms. So I'll just read them, and that will be the end of the episode. This is a verb from 1919. Transitive definition says to deliver spontaneously. Intransitive says to improvise, especially lines or a speech. Next is the second form of ad lib. Adjective 1935. Spoken, composed, or performed. Without preparation, and the third form is not officially a third form because there's no dash, so it's ad space lib. This is an adverb from 1794. One, in accordance with one's wishes. Two, 
without restraint or limit. And the uh, etymology is saying this is from NL, which again, I think is New Latin, maybe, uh, which means, which says, ad libitum. So I'm guessing if uh, that is in the dictionary, oh, you know what? It's the next one. We're going to read those. Ad libitum. There's two forms. Uh, Adverb from 1610. It just has the synonym ad lib, which is what we just read, as in rats fed ad libitum. And the etymology is saying this is again an L in accordance with desire. So I'm guessing in this example, rats fed ad libitum as they desired to eat. That is when they would eat. And the second form of ad libitum, this is an adjective, circa 1801, omissible. O-M-I-S-S-I-B-L-E, omissible according to a performer's wishes, and it's used as a direction in music. Compare it to the word obligato, O-B-B-L-I-G-A-T-O. That will end this episode. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, the next one will be the last section of page 16. Yay! Thank you for listening. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. Uh, Right off the bat, um, if you remember from, ah, geez, probably 10 or 15 episodes ago, um, I expressed a question. Um, That's a weird way to say that. Um, I noticed that a lot of these words have their uh, basis or original usage in the 14th century, and I was curious uh, what it was about the 14th century that uh, where all these words came from. Why did they come from that time specifically? Obviously, it's not the majority of the words, but it's I see that I see that year more than other ones. Uh, so I did I did do a little bit of research, uh, and I'll just read a little bit, maybe a little bit more than a little bit uh, from the Wikipedia page for Middle English. Uh, It says, Middle English, abbreviated to M-E, was a form of the English language spoken after the Norman Conquest in 1066 until the late 15th century. Uh, So, by the way, the 14th century is kind of right in the middle of that, or near the end. Uh, English underwent, underwent distinct variations and developments following the Old English period. Scholarly opinion varies, but the Oxford English Dictionary specifies the period when Middle English was spoken as being from 1150 to 1500. And of course, the 14th century is from 1300 to 1400, essentially. So uh, yeah, that's pretty close to the middle. The stage of the development of the English language roughly followed the high to the late Middle Ages. Uh, Middle English saw significant changes to its grammar, pronunciation, and orthography. Writing conventions during the Middle English period varied widely. And uh, if you go down uh, pretty good ways, uh, there's an entire section specifically for the 14th century. From around the early 14th century, there was significant migration into London, particularly from the counties of the East Midlands, and a new prestige London dialect began to develop based chiefly on the speech of the East Midlands, but also influenced by that of other regions. The writing of this period, however, continues to reflect a variety of regional forms of English. So I thought that was kind of interesting. It just gives uh, a bit more information about um, why so many of these words uh, say the 14th century. There was a big change in the English language at that time. All right, let's get to these words. Since that took up some time, I'll try and get through this a little quickly. Uh, First for today is ad loc, A-D space L-O-C. This is an abbreviation for, uh, well, the Latin term ad locum, L-O-C-U-M, and it means to or at the place. Next is A-D-M, all lowercase. This is an abbreviation for administration or administrative. Next is ADM, all caps. This is an abbreviation for Admiral. Next is ADMAN, A-D-M-A-N. And I thought there was a dash, but there's no dash. ADMAN. Uh, This is a noun from 1909, a person who writes, solicits, or places advertisements. Or as I sometimes like to say, advertisements. Next is ADMASS, A-D-M-A-S-S. This is a noun from 1955, 
It's chiefly British, it's telling me. Mass media advertising. Also, the society influenced by it. Next is ad measure. All one word. This is a verb from 1641. To determine the proper share of. And the synonym is apportion. A-P-P-O-R-T-I-O-N. Next is ad measurement. Noun from 1523. One. Determination and apportionment of shares. Two. Determination or comparison of dimensions. Three. It just has the synonyms dimensions and size. Next is admetus. Admetus. Yep. Capital A. D-M-E-T-U-S. This is a noun from uh, 1567. It's telling me this is from the Greek admitos. The definition says, A king of Pharae who is saved by Apollo from his fated death when his wife Alcestis, or Alcestis offers to die in his place. So this is from some Greek mythology. Next is admin, A-D-M-I-N. This is an abbreviation for administration or administrative. Next is administer, verb, from the 14th century. There's our, our year. Transitive definitions are one, to manage or supervise the execution, use, or conduct of, as in administer a trust fund. Two, A, to meet out. Meet is spelled M-E-T-E. Dispense is a synonym, as in administer punishment. To be, to give ritually, as in administer the last rites. To see, to give remedially, as in administer a dose of medicine. Intransitive definitions are 1. To perform the office of administrator. 2. To furnish a benefit. Minister is the synonym, as in administer to an ailing friend. Three, to manage affairs. Administrable, administrable uh, is the adjective, and administrant is the noun. Next is administrate. This is a verb from 1550. It just has the synonym administer. Next is administration. This is a noun from 14th century. One, performance of executive duties. Management is the synonym. Two, the act or process of administering. Three, the execution of public affairs as distinguishable from policy making. For A, a body of persons who administer. For B, often capitalized. A group constituting the political executive in a presidential government. 4C, a governmental agency or board. 5, the term of office of an administrative officer or body. Administrative is our next word. This is an adjective, circa 1731, of or relating to administration or an administration. Executive is the synonym. Administratively is the adverb. Next is administrative county, noun from 1949. A British local administrative unit, often not coincident with an older county. Next is administrative law, noun from 1851. Law dealing with the establishment, duties and powers of, and available remedies against authorized agencies in the executive branch of the government. Next is administrator, noun from the 15th century. 1. A person legally vested with the right of administration of an estate. 2a. One who administers especially business, school, or governmental affairs. 2b. A priest appointed to administer a diocese or parish temporarily. Next is administratix? Administratix, yep. A-D-M-I-N-I-S-T-R-A-T-R-I-X. Administratix. Uh, This is a noun from uh, circa 1623. I'm guessing this is kind of an old term. A woman who is an administrator, especially of an estate. I have uh, have never heard administratrix 
Um, I am aware that adding tricks at the end can can make a word uh, feminine. The first one that I can think of is, of course, dominatrix. Um, but I have not heard administratrix, and I can't imagine that I ever will. Seems uh, Definitely seems like an old word. Um, last word for today is admirable. This is an adjective from the 15th century. One, deserving the highest esteem. Excellent is the synonym. Number two is obsolete. Exciting wonder. I feel like obsolete should have been added on to the last word. Uh, exciting wonder for admirable. Surprising is the uh, synonym. Admirability is the noun. Admirableness is another noun. And admirably is the adverb. That will end this episode. Again, thank you for listening as usual. And our next episode will start at the top of page 17. We are really chugging through this. Thank you and goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. If this is not what you were expecting, then you are listening to the wrong podcast. But I uh, hope that you will keep on listening because this is the best podcast ever. I say that not sarcastically in any way. First word for today This is the top of page 17. Admiral. uh, A-D-M-I-R-A-L. This is a noun from the 15th century. One. This is archaic. The commander-in-chief of a navy. 2A. It just has the synonym flag officer. 2B. A commissioned officer in the navy or coast guard who ranks above a vice admiral... Vice admiral and whose insignia is four stars. And it says, compare to the word general. Number three, this is also archaic. Flagship, that's the synonym. Four, any of several brightly colored uh, nymphalid butterflies. And it says, compared to red admiral. I uh, didn't know that there were any butterflies called admirals. Now I'm going to have to look those up and see what they look like. Next is Admiral of the Fleet. That's the whole phrase. From 1652, the highest ranking officer of the British Navy. Next is Admiralty. Admiralty. A-D-M-I-R-A-L-T-Y. This is a noun from the 15th century. One, uh, if it's capitalized, the executive department or officers formerly having general authority over British naval affairs. Two, the court having jurisdiction over questions of maritime law. Also, the system of law administered by admiralty courts. Admiration is next. This is a noun from the 15th century. One, archaic again. It just has the synonym wonder. Two, an object of esteem. Three, delighted or astonished approbation. Approbation is spelled A-P-P-R-O-B-A-T-I-O-N. Next is admire. This is a verb from 1566. The transitive definitions are one, to regard with admiration. Two, archaic, to marvel at. We've had a lot of archaic definitions just in these uh, first few, uh, handful of words. The intransitive definition is, uh, in italics, it's saying dial, D-I-A-L. I'm wondering if that's uh, like dialogue, if it's used in dialogue. Uh, to like very much, as in I would admire to know why, n- wh- let me start that one over. I would admire to know why not. That is from A.H. Lewis. It says uh, a synonym of admire is the word regard. Admirer, ugh, admirer is the noun, and uh, admiringly is the adverb. The etymology says this is from the uh, Middle French admirer. Again, pronunciation bad. Uh, that means to marvel, uh, to marvel at. That is from the Latin admirari, uh, which is made combining ad plus mirari, which means to wonder. And that is from mirus, M-I-R-U-S, which means astonishing. Next is admissible, adjective from 1611. One, 
capable of being allowed or conceded. Conceded is spelled C O N C E D E D. And permissible is a synonym for that,、uh, as in evidence legally admissible in court. Two, capable or worthy of being admitted, as in admissible to the university. Admissibility is a noun, and that is a fun word to say. Next is admission, noun from 15th century. One a, the act or process of admitting. One b. The state or privilege of being admitted, one c, a fee paid at or for admission, two a, the granting of an argument or position not fully proved, two b, acknowledgement that a fact or statement is true. Admissive is the adjective. Admit is the next word, and I believe this will be the last one for today. This is a verb from the 15th century. Transitive definitions are one a to allow scope for no what?、Uh, let's try that one again. To allow scope for, and then permit is the synonym, as in admits no possibility of misunderstanding. One b to concede as true or valid, as in admitted making a mistake. I do that a lot because I make lots of mistakes, as you've probably heard in just this episode. Two、uh, a to allow entry as to a place, fellowship, or privilege, as in an open window had admitted rain. Or also, admitted to the club. Two b to accept into a hospital as an inpatient, as in he was admitted last night for chest pains. Intransitive definitions are one to give entrance or access. Two a, the synonyms allow and permit, as in admits of two interpretations. Two b, to make acknowledgement, and that is used with the word to t o, and the synonym is the word acknowledge. And、uh, with that, we will end this episode, and I will record the next one, and you will listen to the next one. Tomorrow, when it is posted. Thank you and goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode.、Uh, first word for today is admittance. A D M I T T A N C E. This is a noun from 1536. One A, the act or process of admitting. One B, permission to enter. Two, the reciprocal. Reciprocal of the impedance of a circuit. Admittedly is the next word. This is an adverb from 1804. One, as has been or must be admitted, as in an admittedly inad inadequate treatment. Two, it must be admitted, as in admittedly we took a chance. Next is admix, one word a d m i x. This is a verb from 1533, and the definition just says to mix in. The etymology says back formation from the obsolete admixed a d m i x t,、uh, which looks like it means mingled with, and that is from the Middle English, which is from the Latin admixtus. So the next time I'm making、uh, a batch of cookies, which I haven't done for probably at least twenty years, I will use the word admix when I say I'm going to、uh, mix these in. That was a dumb example.、Uh, next is admixture. So the same as the last one, just t-u-r-e added to the end. This is a noun from 1605. One a, the action of mixing. One、uh, b, the fact of being mixed. Two a. Something added by mixing, to be a product of mixing, mixing, and mixture is the synonym. Next, we have the word admonish. This is a verb from the 14th century. Transitive definitions. I'm not even sure. Do we have intransitive definitions? I don't think we do. So, transitive verb one a to indicate duties or obligations to one b. To express warning or disapproval to, especially in a gentle, earnest, or solicitous manner. 
to, to give friendly, earnest advice or encouragement to. And the synonym uh, says the word reprove, R-E-P-R-O-V-E. Admonisher is a noun, admonishingly is the adverb, and admonishment is also a noun. The etymology, with which I will pare down, says it's coming from the Latin admonere, which means to warn, W-A-R-N. That is coming from the word monere, which means also to warn. What? Um, well, it was ad plus monere, but it's, this, it's basically the same. Uh, and there's more at the word mind, M-I-N-D. Next is admonition. This is a noun from the 14th century. One, gentle or friendly reproof. Two, counsel or warning against fault or oversight. Next is admonitory. Admonitory. I'm just reading the pronunciation, making sure I have it all correct. Admonitory or admonitory. This is an adjective from 1594. Expressing admonition. Warning is a uh, synonym. Admonitorily is the adverb. Next is adnate, one word, A-D-N-A-T-E. I was just separating it for enunciation. Adjective from 1661, grown to a usually unlike part, especially along a margin, as in a calyx adnate to the ovary. Calyx is one word, C-A-L-Y-X. I'm not sure what that is but it's something related to the ovary, maybe? Uh, a calyx adnate to the ovary. Adnation is the noun. Next is ad nauseum, two words. Uh, I believe this is similar to ad infinitum, which we read uh, in a previous episode. It is ad space n-a-u-s-e-a-m. This is uh, an adverb from 1647. To be, no, to a sickening or excessive degree. And uh, I actually learned of this term years ago. I made um, a piece of art in some college class that I was in that had uh, just a bunch of eyes. I had drawn a bunch of eyes and um, kind of put them into a, a spiral going into the center. And uh, I think it was called eyes ad nauseum or something like that. Next is ad nexa, A-D-N-E-X-A. This is a noun from 1864, conjoined, subordinate, or associated anatomical parts. Adnexal is the adjective. The etymology is saying this is from the uh, Latin word anactere, A-N-N-E-C-T-E-R-E, which means to bind to, and there's more at the word annex. Next is adu, A-D-O. If anybody has ever heard uh, of even a small amount of Shakespeare, they'll know that uh, this word is in the title of one of his plays. I am not uh, very familiar with a lot of Shakespeare or much Shakespeare at all, but I do know that. This is a noun from the 14th century. One, heightened fuss or concern. The synonym is to do, T-O dash D-O. Two, time-wasting bother over trivial details, as in wrote the paper without further ado. Three has these synonyms trouble or difficulty. Next is adobe, A-D-O-B-E, noun from 1748. One, a brick or building material of sun-dried earth and straw. Two, a structure made of adobe bricks. Three, a heavy clay used in making adobe bricks. Broadly, alluvial or playa clay in desert or arid regions. Adobe-like is the adjective, and it has a little picture of an adobe, uh, which is the second definition. Adobe actually comes up uh, relatively often in my day-to-day world. Um, I work in kind of the video world and graphics and drawing and kind of things like that. And so there is um, a big program, a big a company that many of you have probably heard of called Adobe. And uh, they make lots of very useful programs for people in the kind of arts and creative world. Um, I wonder where they got the name from. 
Uh, I, I feel like I should look that up. Next, we have adobo, A-D-O-B-O. This is a noun from 1938. Um, this is Spanish, just, our, just like our last word, and I forgot to read the etymology for that. It is from, I think it's from, looks like Spanish, from the Arab altub, A-L-T-U-B, and there's a horizontal line over the U, and it just means the brick. And so back to the definition for adobo. Uh, a Philippine dish of fish or meat usually marinated in a sauce containing vinegar and garlic, browned in fat, and simmered in the marinade. Next is adolescence. This is a noun from the 15th century. One, the state or process of growing up. I think I'm still working on that. Two, the period of life from puberty to maturity, terminating legally at the age of majority. I almost feel like it should say the age of maturity, but it says the age of majority. Is that, does that mean the majority of people? When they get to the end, that, that's the legal end of adolescence? Not sure. Uh, three, a stage of development as of a language or culture prior to maturity. Next is adolescent, the first form, A-D-O-L-E-S-C-E-N-T, noun, from the 15th century, one that is in the state of adolescence. Makes sense to me. Uh, the etymology says this is from the Latin ado, let's see, adolescere, which means to grow up. And there's more at the word adult. The second form of adolescent is, the, uh, is an adjective from 1785. One, of, relating to, or being in adolescence. Two, emotionally or intellectually immature. Yep, that's me. Uh, adolescently is the adverb. And, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and read this last word. This is Adonai, capital A, D-O-N-A-I. This is a noun from the before the 12th century. We don't see that too often. Uh, used in place of... Y-H-W-H, as a name of the God of the Hebrews during prayer recitation. That's when you recite, recitation. Um, and the etymology says this is Hebrew, and it gives um, basically a different spelling of Adonai. A, with the horizontal line over it. D-H-O, with the horizontal line. I should know what that is, but I don't. N-A, horizontal line. And why? Adonai. I never learned uh, much Hebrew. My, my mom's side of the family is Jewish, so I guess technically I am, although I'm not religious myself. But we do do some of the uh, religious holidays like Hanukkah and Passover. Um, so I've definitely sang the songs and heard lots of the words, but I don't really know what a lot of them mean. But I did know what Adonai is. We will end the episode there. Thank you for listening. The next one will start with another word. What a great way to end the episode. Thank you and goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. I don't think I have anything special to say at the start of this, so let's get into it. First word for today is Adonis, capital A-D-O-N-I-S. This is a noun from 1565. One, a youth loved by Aphrodite who is killed at hunting by a wild boar and restored to Aphrodite from Hades for a part of each year. Two, a very handsome young man. This is from Greek mythology, and it's, uh, the etymology is saying this is Latin from the Greek Adonis, with the uh, horizontal line over the O. Ado, ado, is it Adonis, I think? I think in English we say Adonis. I don't know why I said Adonis with the Greek one, but maybe that's how they said it. I am I am not one of these. I am not a very handsome young man. Uh, next word is adopt. This is a verb from 1500. Transitive definitions are one, to take by choice into a relationship, especially to take voluntarily a child of other parents as one's own child. Two, 
to take up and practice or use, as in adopted a moderate tone. Three, to accept formerly and put into effect, as in adopt a constitutional amendment. Four, to choose a textbook for required study in a course. Five, to sponsor the care and maintenance of, as in adopt a highway. Intransitive definitions, or maybe it's just one. To adopt a child, as in couples choosing to adopt. Adoptability is a noun. Adoptable is an adjective, and adopter is a noun. I know、uh, a good number of people who、uh, either are adopted or have adopted,、uh, and I just I think it's really good that people are doing that. There's a lot of kids,、uh, a lot of orphans in the world, or a lot of kids who、um, need good homes that otherwise wouldn't get them.、Um, and so I,、uh, I I take my non-existent hat off to you, people who have adopted. And、uh, for those of you who who are adopted,、uh, it's probably been a struggle for you.、Uh, there's a lot of your world that you probably don't know,、um, but、uh, and I think it's probably hard to understand why somebody would would give you up for adoption if that was the case.、Um, but I'm pretty sure in all of your cases you are very loved your, by your parents. And so with that, we will get onto some synonyms for the word adopt. It says. Adopt, embrace, espouse, mean to take an opinion, policy, or practice as one's own. Adopt implies accepting something created by another, or foreign to one's own nature, as in forced to adopt new policies. Embrace implies a ready or happy acceptance, as in embraced the customs of their new homeland. Espouse or espouse. Adds an implication of close attachment to a clause, and sharing of its fortunes, as in espoused the cause of women's rights. Next is the word adoptee. This is a noun from 1851. One who is adopted. Adoption, noun from 14th century. The act of adopting. The state of being adopted. Next is adoptionism, and、uh, for those who have a keen ear, you may notice that、uh, the, it, this possibly sounds a little bit different. And、uh, the reason is because the last time I recorded, when I was recording the episode that you were just listening to mere seconds ago,、uh, it turns out that the、uh, SD card I was recording on filled up. And I had no idea that it had stopped recording partway through the、uh, adoptionism. Uh, description, and、uh, so this is、uh, days later, and I am now recording the rest of the episode. And then I actually recorded an entire episode after that that did not get recorded because I somehow am very dumb and didn't notice. Enough of that. Let's go into adoptionism. This is a noun from 1833. The doctrine that Jesus of Nazareth became the Son of God by adoption. Adoptionist is、uh, a noun, and this is often capitalized. And、uh, in the past, you may have noticed that I've、uh, I've kind of bitched a little bit about、uh, having some of these Christian Catholic words or phrases in here,、um, but I just sort of had to accept that that's part of the dictionary. Those are words that are 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 in our world. Um, and just recently,、uh, I believe it was in the last episode, there was a Hebrew Jewish word Adonai. So,、um, yep, it just is what it is. Next is adoptive. This is an adjective from the 15th century. One made or or acquired by adoption, as in the adoptive father. Two of or relating to adoption. Adoptively is the adverb. Adorable is the adjective is an adjective from 1611. One worthy of being adored. Two extremely charming, as in an adorable child. How sweet! Adorability is a noun. Adorableness is a noun, and adorably is the adverb. Next is adoration. This is a noun from the 15th century. The act of adoring. The state of being adored. 
Those were not two separate uh, definitions. There's a colon in between those, uh, so I think they're just they're just uh, similar but different. Next is adore, A-D-O-R-E, transitive verb from the 14th century. One, to worship or honor as a deity or as divine. Two, to regard with loving admiration and devotion, as in adored his wife. I do adore my wife. Number three, to be very fond of, as in adores pecan or pecan pie, depending on how you want to say that. I also adore pecan pie. Which do I adore more, my wife or pecan pie? I will have to think about that one. Synonym, it says, see the word revere. Adorer is a noun, and adoringly is the adverb. And that is the end of this episode, because the next one is extremely long. And until next time, this is Spencer reading the dictionary. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of the dictionary. If you listened to the last episode, you will know that um, I recorded this episode once before, and I have to record it again because the card filled up. Very, very disappointed in myself and that I have to record this again, but let's do it. For my own sake, I'm going to try and make this a little quick. First word is adorn, A-D-O-R-N. This is a verb, transitive, uh, from the 14th century. One, to enhance the appearance of, especially with beautiful objects. Two, to enliven or decorate as if with ornaments, as in people of fashion who adorned the court. There is some long synonym information. Decorate, ornament, embellish, beautify, deck, and garnish mean to enhance the appearance of something by adding something unessential. Adorn, our original word, implies an enhancing by something beautiful in itself, as in a diamond necklace adorned her neck. Decorate suggests relieving plainness or monotony by adding beauty of color or design, as in decorate a birthday cake. Ornament and embellish imply the adding of something extraneous. Ornament stresses the heightening or setting off of the original, as in a white house adorned with green shutters. Embellish often stresses the adding of of superfluous or adventitious ornament, as in embellish a page with floral borders. Beautify adds to embellish a suggestion of counterbalancing uh, plainness or ugliness, as in will beautify the grounds with flower beds. Deck, D-E-C-K, implies the addition of something that contributes to gaiety, splendor, or showiness, as in a house all decked out for Christmas. Garnish suggests decorating with a small, final touch and is used especially in referring to the serving of food, as in an entree garnished with parsley. And that will end the definition for adorn. Next is adornment. This is a noun from the 14th century. One, the action of adorning, the state of being adorned. Two, something that adorns. Next is ADP, all caps. This is a noun. It is short for adenosine diphosphate. This is from 1943. A nucleotide, C10H15N5O10P2, composed of adenosine and two phosphate groups that is formed in living cells as an intermediate between ATP and AMP, and that is and that is reversibly converted to ATP for the storing of energy by the addition of a high-energy phosphate group, called also adenosine diphosphate. And I believe maybe 10, 15 episodes ago, something like that, maybe not even that long, uh, we had ATP and AMP and uh, and ADP, I think, as, uh, as I think those were in the definition of something. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Next is ad rem, two words, A-D space R-E-M. This is an adverb or an adjective, and it literally means uh, in Latin, to the thing. This is from 1599, to the point or purpose. 
and the synonym is relevantly. Next, we have、uh, a suffix, adren or adren, a d r e n, or adreno, a d r e n o.、Uh, one, adrenal glands, as in adrenocortical.、Uh, two, adrenaline, as in adren adrenergic. Oh, I remember this one from the first time I recorded this. Adrenergic. Uh, I believe is how it's pronounced, and I think we're going to、uh, read that in a few words. But it's spelled A D R E N E R G I C, so it looks like it's A D R plus energetic, but I believe it's pronounced adrenergic. We'll get to that one next. Is adrenal the first form? This is a noun from 1866. It just has the synonym adrenal gland. Next is the second form of adrenal. This is an adjective from 1868, of relating to or derived from the adrenal glands or their secretions, as in adrenal steroids. Next is、uh, fun one adrenalect adrenalectomy. This is a noun from 1903, surgical removal of an adrenal gland. And adrenalectomized is an adjective. I love those crazy, fun, long words. Adrenalectomized. Next is adrenal gland. This is a noun from 1875. Either of a pair of complex endocrine organs near the anterior medial border of the kidney, consisting of a mesodermal cortex that produces glucocorticoid. Mineralocorticoid and adrogenic hormones, and an ectodermal medulla that produces epinephrine and norepinephrine. Norepinephrine. Yep, norepinephrine. I think called also adrenal or supradrenal gland. Next is adrenaline with a capital A. This is a trademark used for a preparation of. Lavoratory epinephrine, lavora, lavoratator, lavoratatory epinephrine. Next is oh, and the last one was spelled A D R E N A L I N. Next is adrenaline, with an E at the end, no capital A. This is a noun from 1890, and it has the synonym epinephrine, often used in non-technical contexts. As in the fans were jubilant, raucous, their adrenaline running high, and that is from W. P. Kinsella. Next is adrenalized. This is an adjective from 1973, filled with a sudden rush of energy. The synonym is excited. Oh, and here's our adrenergic, and let's just double check the pronunciation. Adrenergic. And I believe this is the word where I discussed the、uh, the emphasis in the pronunciation guide. So, for those who don't know,、uh, the in the pronunciation of each word, it is broken into syllables. There are some is a funky spelling, some funky characters you might see.、Um, but in this case, I am talking about the emphasis. So, it tells you with a、um, a symbol that looks like a an apostrophe. Which syllable gets the emphasis? So in this case, it's adrenergic, and not all the time, but sometimes, like in this word, there's also a what I'm gonna call like a sub-emphasis syllable, and they designate that by a symbol that looks like a comma. So instead of the top of the line, it's at the bottom of the line, and in this case, it's the first syllable, the letter A, adrenergic. I hope that helps. Any of you who didn't know any of that,、uh, this is an adjective from 1934. One, liberating, activated by or involving adrenaline or a substance like adrenaline, as in an adrenergic nerve. Two, resembling adrenaline, especially in physiological action, as in adrenergic drugs. And adrenergically is the adverb. There's words like this that I wish that I could remember to use in my day-to-day -day life. I really don't think I will. There are a handful of words that I've、uh, read over these 17 pages that、uh, I I have remembered a little bit, but there really aren't that many.
Next is adrenochrome, A D R E N O C H R O M E. This is a noun, circa 1913. A red colored mixture of quinones, I think that's it, quinones or quinones,、uh, derived from epinephrine by oxidation. And apologi- apologies to all you、uh, science people out there who know these words that I mispronounce. Next and last word for this episode is adrenocortical. This is an adjective from 1920 of relating to or derived from the cortex of the adrenal glands. Thank you so much for listening. We will start the next episode at the top of page 18. This is Spencer reading the dictionary, and I am signing off. Thank you. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of the dictionary. First word is a long one. Oh boy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight、uh, syllables. Adrenocorticosteroid. This is all one word, surprisingly enough. This is a noun from 1960. A steroid obtained from resembling or having physiological effects like those of the adrenal cortex. Next is adrenocorticotropic. This is a, an adjective from 1936, acting on or stimulating the adrenal cortex. As in adrenocorticotropic activity. Next is adrenocorticotropic hormone. This is a noun from 1937, and it just has the synonym, which、uh, looks to be an acronym, ACTH. Next is adrenocorticotropin, T R O P I N. This is、uh, a noun from 1952, also the same、uh, synonym, ACTH. Next, and this will be the last、uh, scientific word for a little bit adrenoleukodystrophy. Let me try that one again. Adrenoleukodystrophy. That is spelled A D R E N O L E U K O D Y S T R O P H Y. This is a noun from 1976. A rare. Demyelinating disease of the central nervous system that is inherited as a sex linked recessive trait, chiefly、uh, affecting males in childhood, and that is characterized by progressive blindness, deafness, tonic spasms, and mental deterioration. And it is abbreviated to ALD.、Uh, I wonder if、uh, this is related to ALS at all. I should probably. Look up what、uh, ALS stands for, and I'm guessing it might be similar to adrenoleukodystrophy. I am not sure. I should probably learn this. Next is adrift. This is an adverb or adjective from 1624. One, without motive power and without anchor or mooring, M O O R I N G,、uh, as in a boat adrift on the sea. Two, Without ties, guidance, or security, as in people morally adrift. Three, free from restraint or support. Next is adroit, A D R O I T. This is an adjective from、uh, 1652. Having or showing skill, cleverness, or resourcefulness in handling situations, as in an adroit leader. Or adroit maneuvers. Synonyms are、uh, clever and dexterous. D E X T E R O U S. I wonder if the name Dexter, Dexter is related to dexterous at all、uh, in its original.、Um, I don't know the word.、Um, you know, in its, its etymology, where did it come from? Uh, adroitly is an adverb, and adroitness is a noun. Next is、uh, ad, adcititious. 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 That is how it's pronounced, I believe. A D S C I T I T I O U S. Adcititious. Adjective from、uh, 1620. Derived or acquired from something extrinsic. 
The etymology is saying this is from the Latin verb ad adscere. Oh, is that how it's pronounced? Or ad siscere, uh, a d s c i s c e r e. I know that uh, the c's are pronounced k sounds. I think all the time, but I am not a hundred percent sure on this one.、Uh, that verb means to admit or adopt, and that is、uh, made combining ad plus. Skiscare, and I'll just say it that way because it's fun. Which means to get to know, and that is from、uh, originally skire, s c i r e, which means to know. There is more at the word science. So there you go. The sci, the word science comes from the Latin skire, which means to know. I don't know why I never thought about looking that up in the past, because I do find this etymology stuff pretty interesting. Next is adsorb. Ooh, I remember this from many, many episodes ago. I, I、uh, thought it might have been a mistake. I didn't think it was because it's it's such a weird word.、Uh, it's similar to absorb, but this is adsorb, and I had to go look ahead and make sure it was correct. This is a verb from、uh, 1868. Transitive definition: to take up and hold by adsorption. Intransitive definition is to become adsorbed. Adsorbable is、uh, the adjective. Adsorber is noun. Next is adsorbate. Adsorbate.、Uh, this is a noun from 1925. An adsorbed substance. Next is adsorbent. This is a noun from 1917. A usually solid substance that adsorbs another substance. Adsorbent is the adjective, and now I'm starting to wonder if absorb is just in my head, and that's not even a real word. Let me go check. Nope, I was right. Absorb is a word, and this is just a completely different word. That was really starting to hurt my brain.、Uh, all right, I think I left off at、uh, adsorbent. This is adsorption. Uh, this is a noun from 1882. The adhesion in an extremely thin layer of molecules, as of gases, solutes, or liquids, to the surfaces of solid bodies or liquids with which they are in contact. And it says compared to the word absorption with the B. So that's interesting. They are obviously related.、Uh, adsorptive is the adjective. Adularia, or no, it's adularia, A D U L A R I A. This is a noun from 1798. A transparent or translucent orthoclase. That is spelled O R T H O C L A S E. This is saying that it is from、uh, Italian,、um, adulare or adulare,、uh, which is from adula. A D U L A with a capital A, and those are Swiss, or、uh, that is a Swiss mountain group. Next is adulation. I'm guessing this is related somehow.、Uh, this is a noun from the 14th century. Maybe it's not related. Excessive or slavish, slavish, admiration or flattery. Adulate is a verb. Adulator. Is a noun and adulatory is an adjective. The etymology is saying this is from the uh, Latin uh, la, 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 adulari, which means to fawn on, and then in parentheses it says of dogs. So I guess to fawn on dogs.、Um, also flatter, f l a t t e r. Next is、uh, the word adult. Something that I technically am, but I often don't feel like I am. This is、uh, the first form of adult, an adjective from fifteen thirty one. One, fully developed and mature, grown up is a synonym. Two, of relating to, intended for, or befitting adults, as in an adult approach to a problem. Three, dealing in or with explicitly sexual material. As in adult bookstores or adult movies, adulthood is a noun. Adultly is an adverb. Adultness is a noun. 
the etymology is saying this is from uh, the Latin verb adolescere, which um, I can tell you looks like adolescence, A-D-O-L-E-S-C-E-R-E, which means to grow up, which is uh, what you are physically doing during adolescence. Um, and that is from, uh, uh, that is made combining ad plus oliscare, which means uh, to grow, I think. Oliscare is actually from oliscare with an A. That means to grow. And there's more at the word old. Second form of the word adult, much shorter. Um, and uh, this will be the last word for this episode. This is a noun from 1658. One that is adult, especially a human being after an age, as 21, specified by law. Adult-like is an adjective. And that will end this episode. Thank you for listening. Uh, This is the top of page 18. Next will be the second quarter of page 18. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of the Dictionary Podcast, read by me, your host, Spencer. First for today is adult education, noun from 1851. It's just the synonym continuing education. Next is adulterant, A-D-U-L-T-E-R-A-N-T. This is a noun circa 1755, an adulterating substance or agent. Adulterant is an adjective. What what exactly does that mean? I guess we'll learn when we read the word adulterating, which is from adulterate, which is next. Uh, so adulterate, first form. This is a transitive verb uh, from 1531. To corrupt, debase, or make impure by the addition of a foreign or inferior substance or element, especially to prepare for sale by replacing more valuable with less valuable or inert ingredients. Adulterator is a noun. The etymology is saying this is from the Latin verb adulterare, adulterare, uh, which is made combining ad plus alter, A-L-T-E-R, which means other, and there's more at the word else, E-L-S-E. Second form of adulterate, this is an adjective from 1570. One, being adulterated. And the synonym is spurious, S-P-U-R-I-O-U-S. Two, tainted with adultery. And the synonym is adulterous. Next is adulteration. This is a noun from 1506. One, the process of adulterating the condition of being adulterated. Two, an adulterated product. Next is adulterer, A-D-U-L-T-E-R-E-R. This is a noun from the 15th century. A person who commits adultery, especially a man who commits adultery. I don't know why it has to be especially a man. That seems odd to me, but okay. If you say so. Next is, oh, here we go. That's, this is why. Because the next word is adulteress with an E-S-S at the end. This is a noun from 1577. A woman who commits adultery. Not totally sure why we need to have separate words for that. Um, I guess if you look at other languages, like Spanish, for instance, they have... Uh, masculine and feminine forms of words, or certain words are either masculine or feminine. Um, Often the the masculine ones have an O, often the feminine ones have an A at the end. Um, So I guess we're sort of taking it from that, adulterer, adulteress, but really I think adulterer just fits fine for both. Next is adulterine, is that? Yes, adulterine, A-D-U-L-T, E-R-I-N-E. This is an adjective from 1572. 1A, marked by adulteration. And we see that synonym spurious again. Uh, 1B, just has the synonym illegal. 2, born of adultery. So I'm guessing that would be um, somebody has adulterated their spouse. They have cheated on their spouse and Uh, the child born from that 
that new relationship, that affair, would be adulterine, an adulterine child, I guess. I don't know. Next is adulteress. This is an adjective from 1558. Relating to, characterized by, or given to adultery, as in an adulterous affair or an adulterous wife. Adulterously is the adverb. Next is adultery. Wait, sorry. I think that last one was, I think I said adultery, but it was supposed to be adulterously. That's the adverb. Because next is adultery. This is a noun from the 15th century. Voluntary sexual intercourse between a married man and someone other than his wife or between a married woman and someone other than her husband. Also an act of adultery. Next, adult onset diabetes. This is a noun from 1975. It just has the synonym type 2 diabetes. Next is adumbrate. Adumbrate. A-D-U-M-B-R-A-T-E. This is a transitive verb from 1581. One, to foreshadow vaguely. Uh, Intimate is the synonym. Two, to suggest, disclose, or outline partially, as in a dumbrate, a plan. Three, has the synonyms overshadow and obscure. Adumbration is uh, a noun. Adumbrative. Adumbrative, I think that's how it's pronounced, a dumbrative is the adjective, and adumbratively is the adverb. Uh, yes, adverb. The etymology is saying this is from Latin, um, adumbrare, which is from ad plus umbra, which means shadow, and there's more at the word umbrage. Next is the word adjust. This is an adjective from the 15th century. One, we have the synonyms scorched and burned. Number two is uh, archaic, of a sunburned appearance. Three is also archaic, of a gloomy appearance or disposition. How did I pronounce the word originally? A dust? Did I even say the word? Now I don't even remember. But yes, the word is a dust, A D U S T. The etymology is saying this is from the Latin adurere, A-D-U-R-E-R-E, which means to set fire to. And that is uh, made combining ad plus urere, which means to burn. And there's more at the word ember. This is why I like reading the dictionary. I, If I'm curious about the definition of a word or the etymology of a word, I can go to say dictionary.com or whatever and look it up but there are so many words in the english language it's pretty ridiculous um there are there are words in this one episode that i was never aware of a dust um if i look back at the last episode there was uh which one was it in particular uh there was ad satitious. Um, adsorb is just kind of a weird word to me, and I'm sure it's not terribly uncommon, though. Um, adularia, you know, there are these words that I just don't know. Adumbrate, um, and so it's, it's really great to learn these words and learn where they came from, and I will probably forget them instantaneously, but that's, that's beside the point. Uh, at least I now know that they exist. Uh, so, next word after that tangent is A-D-V. This is an uh, abbreviation for four things. One, adverb. I see that regularly while reading the dictionary. Two, uh, the word against. And that is an abbreviation for against because it is from the Latin adversus. Next is uh, number three, advertisement or advertising. And then four, advisory. Next is ADVAL, A-D space V-A-L. This is an abbreviation for ad valorum. And that happens to be our next word, ad valorum. This is an adjective from 1698, and it means, in Latin, according to the value. Definition is imposed at a rate percent of value, as in ad valorum tax on goods. And it says compared to the word 
uh, specific, the 5B definition. And the next word, hmm, do I save this for the next episode? Nah, I'll read it now. Okay, this is the first form of advance. This is a verb from the 15th century. Transitive definitions. One, to accelerate the growth or progress of, as in advance a cause. Two, to bring or move forward, as in advance a pawn. Three, to raise to a higher rank. Four, archaic, to lift up. Raise is a synonym. Five, to bring forward in time, especially to make earlier, as in advance the date of the meeting. Six, to bring forward for notice, consideration, or acceptance. Uh, Synonym is propose, as in advance an idea. Seven, to to supply or furnish in expectation of repayment, as in advance a loan. Eight, to raise in rate. Increase is the synonym, as in advance the rent. Intransitive definitions are one, to move forward. Proceed is a synonym, as in an advancing army. Two, to make progress. Increase is a synonym, as in advance in age. Three, to rise in rank, position, or importance, as in advance through the ranks. Four, to rise in rate or price, as in advancing wages. Advancer is a noun. And we have some synonym information, which is at the top of the second column of page 18. Um, and this is at uh, the normally the place where I would start reading the next episode, uh, which is why I was debating on whether or not to read this word. But here we go. Promote, forward, further, mean to help someone or something to move ahead. Advance stresses effective assisting in hastening a process or bringing about a desired end, as in advance the cause of peace. Promote suggests an encouraging or fostering and may denote an increase in status or rank, as in a campaign to promote better health. Forward implies an impetus forcing something ahead. A wage increase, no, sorry, as in a wage increase would forward productivity. Further suggests a removing of obstacles in the way of a desired advance, as in used the marriage to further his career. That will end this episode, and the next episode will start with the second form of advance out of three. Thank you for listening, and goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to this next episode of the dictionary. Um, I haven't spoken about my lips in a little bit. Um, they do feel like I, I think they feel like they are normal again. Um, I do have some excess hair on my lip. One might call that a mustache, which I really don't like, and I need to shave it very soon. So that does uh, rub against my lip, and I am. It does feel a little bit weird, um, but. From uh, what I was talking about earlier, I don't think I'm feeling those symptoms anymore. But at the very least, it seems like it's getting better. It's not as bothersome as it was, and I feel like I'm speaking my words more clearly than I was those uh, first few days when I was having that problem. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, please go listen to all of my other episodes. So, first word for today, this is the second form of advance. This is a noun from 1668. One, a moving forward. Two, a progress in development, as in mistaking material advance for spiritual enrichment. And that is from H.J. Lasky. To be a progressive step. Improvement is a synonym, as in an advance in medical technique. Three, a rise in price, value, or amount. Four, a first step or approach made, as in her attitude discouraged all advances. Five, a provision or something as money or goods before a return is received. Also, the money or goods supplied. Uh, In advance is another form, I guess. Uh, uh, let's see. No, I understand what it's saying. 
in advance. These are new definitions for in advance. One, two, toward or in a place or position ahead, as in sent scouts out in advance. And for some reason, I have trouble with the word T O W A R D. Sometimes I want to say toward. Sometimes I want to say toward or toward. Ah, that's a weird. I'm just gonna try to say toward.、Uh, but I know people say it a couple different ways. Two before a deadline or an anticipated event, as in made reservations in advance. And now we have in advance of, and it has the synonym. Ahead of. Next is the third form of the word advance. This is an adjective from 1701. One made, sent, or furnished ahead of time, as in advance sales. Two going or situated before, as in an advance party of soldiers. Next is advanced with a d at the end. This is an adjective from 1534. One. Far on in time or course, as in a man advanced in years. To a being beyond others in progress or ideas, as in tastes a bit too advanced for the times. To b being beyond the elementary or introductory, as in advanced chemistry. To c greatly developed beyond an initial stage. As in the most advanced scientific methods, or advanced weapons systems. To D, much evolved from an early ancestral type, as in bees and other advanced insects or advanced traits. Next is advanced degree. This is a noun from 1878. A university degree as a master's or doctorate's degree, higher than a bachelor's. Next is advance directive. This is a noun from 1984, a legal document as a living will, signed by a competent person to provide guidance for medical and healthcare decisions, as the termination of life support or organ donation, in the event the person becomes incompetent to make such decisions. Next is advanced level with a capital A at the at the top,、uh, noun from 1947. And it just has the、uh, synonym A level, and I've heard people talk about A level, B level. That's probably more British, I think.、Um, but now I guess the A stands for advanced. Not sure.、Um, I always just thought, thought that they were just in order of letters A B C D,、um, but maybe they actually stand for words. Moving on. Advance man. This is a noun from、uh, 1906. An employee who makes arrangements and handles publicity in advance of an appearance or engagement by the employer, as a political candidate or a circus. Sometimes political candidates can be kind of a circus, so those are kind of related. Next is advance mint. This is a noun from 1553. One, the action of advancing, the state of being advanced. One A, promotion or elevation to a higher rank or position. One B, did I say one A for the last one? I feel like I'm going a little crazy. One、uh, B, progression to a higher stage of development. Two, an improved feature, and the synonym is improvement for that last one. Next is、uh, the first form of advantage. This is a noun from、uh, 1523. One superiority or、uh, of position or condition, as in higher ground gave the enemy the advantage. I think MythBusters or somebody did something about the higher ground. In fact, I think they were doing it in relation to Star Wars Episode Three. Where oh I am showing my nerdiness aren't I? Uh, where、um, boy I'm blanking.、Uh, Obi Wan Kenobi said it's over Anakin I've got the higher ground. That's when they were on the volcano planet which I am blanking on the name of at the moment.、Uh, but yeah no they they were just trying to see if、uh, if you if you have the higher ground if you really do have the advantage and is it over. And to be perfectly honest, I can't remember what they found out about that. 
Go look it up if you're interested. Moving on, this is definition two for advantage. A factor or circumstance of benefit to its possessor, as in lacked the advantages of an education. 3a, we have the synonyms benefit and gain, especially benefit resulting from some course or action, as in a mistake which turned out to our advantage. 3b, this is obsolete. We have the synonym interest, the 2a definition. Four, the first point one in tennis after deuce. We have the phrase to advantage, T-O. Uh, the definition for that is so as to produce a favorable impression or effect, as in wishing to be seen to advantage. And, the, and next we have the second form of advantage. This will be the end of uh, this episode. This is uh, from a uh, transitive verb from 1549. To give an advantage to. Benefit is the synonym. And that will end this episode. Thank you very much for listening. Tune in next time when we talk about more words in the dictionary, starting with the letter A. This will be the end of page 18. Thank you and goodbye.